I still think we got more to fall maybe here in oil. 50% retrace. Um, I mean, I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about the markets and our model. Some, some webinars I'll do that. But since, since I'm on the topic, I'll just say that this is a, this is a swing line setup. There's a couple of setups here in our model. This we call a swing line setup. My traders know what that is. This is called a BCI. It tends to mark the middle of a move. So here's the, here's the move off the low. Here's the move off the high. Pretty much the middle of the move, right? So from here, I wouldn't be surprised if we test pi down here, 47 and a half. I'm gonna cover some more. I have some 50 puts on, short some futures. Anyway, um, but today we're gonna to talk about, I think there's really four fields or um, four categories of trading. Most people only stick to the fundamentals and the technicals. And I think they really are missing out on two important other categories and that's cyclical analysis. And then the, um, which probably is the most important is the, the mental analysis or the, uh, the psychology of you yourself as a trader. That's really what closes the gap between those that are consistent and that those there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of good technicians that just can't trade. There's a lot of people that prescribe the more valuation type of trading and they just have a hard time because analyzing the market's one thing, getting the market right. It's one thing actually getting in and out of trades. And when you have the risk on, it's a completely different mental mental battle or it's different it's a different mindset that you have to get to be a consistent trader and nobody really focuses on working on that part of the part of the business um so i got so many slides up guys give me a second where's where are some of you from here there's a lot of new names people from all over the world here a lot of us people just type in where what part of the world you're in dc washington dallas oklahoma new york nice all right anybody overseas All right. Well, let's do this. Let's talk about, since I kind of already started to touch on it, let's, let's stay on oil here and just have a conversation about the difference between fundamentals, technicals, and why the mental analysis is more important. And then the cyclical analysis, which incorporates time. And you have to have a timing process, right? So when I started the firm, that was one of the things I really wanted to bring to, these are all our different signals the last few years. So let me just get rid of that. Clear drawing set. All right. So when I left the sell side and I was running a couple of rates desks. So for those of you who don't know, my background is I spent the last 10 years trading cash treasuries on an institutional basis. And um, I started in the business at Charles Schwab, trading equities and options. And then I moved down here to South Florida, which is where I live now, and to trade um, fixed income markets. Didn't know anything about bonds, didn't know anything about the treasury market. Really difficult to learn. I don't know if any of you have experience trading bonds, but it's an entirely different language. And it's tough to kind of learn how to how you price everything in 30 seconds, the different maturities, eights of 30 seconds, you know, prices and yield, how they how they differentiate themselves, a yield curve. It's just it's a much more complicated animal. But that's where I cut my teeth and um, uh, we traded 
I mean, I traded with the biggest of the big. I traded real size, did anywhere between 50 billion to 60, 70, 80 billion a year in volume. Um, I covered all what they call the primary dealers. So I talked to all the heads of the desks um, on the treasury desk. The treasury guys tend to run the directional view of the overall fixed income division. So if you look at Bank of America, you look at Merrill, you look at all the big banks, when it comes to the fixed income desk or the trading floor, it's usually the treasury guys that have the view or the opinion as to where the direction of rates are going. And so I talked to those guys were my clients. They called me and I covered them. I worked positions for them and it was all based around the same directional model. And uh, it's a technical model, but then it's also incorporates time and the cyclical component. So, um, and then we would trade for ourselves too. We didn't take a lot of risk overnight, but we would, we would trade intraday. Um, and so basically I day traded the cash treasury markets every day. And at night I had Goldman Sachs and uh, uh, RBC work my, over, my overnight orders. So I'd pass my orders from Tokyo to London. So I was pretty much trading 24, seven, six days a week for the last seven, eight years. And um, in that process, this is where the model got built. And I, I left the sell side just because the rates business has changed a lot, but I really wanted to just kind of start my own firm, still, still work with institutions, but then help independent traders, whether they're professionals or beginning traders, just learn this model and trade it. So that's what we do. But, but back to the, um, the concept of um, the fundamentals versus technical and then cyclical analysis and the mental aspects. I always like to kind of just use this as an example. Um, but the problem, the problem with fundamental analysis, and that's really where all the traders started out, right? Before the eighties is when technical analysis really started to kind of come onto the scene. But before that fundamentals pretty much dominated trading and investing. Um, the only problem with that is just because there's a difference between trading what makes sense or what's logical and what's supposed to happen in the market based on whatever formula you have, right? If you're analyzing stocks, you can look at the discounted cash flow method, all different formulas that you can arrive at what something should be valued at. But that doesn't, but where something should trade in the future is completely different guys, right? Than what's actually happening now. And so the perception of the players in the markets matters more. The positioning of the, of the players in the markets matters more. Um, all these things. So, I mean, we could, the easiest example to think about when you want to talk about fundamentals is the fact that, I mean, God himself could come down and tell us, Hey, the price of oil is 49 right now. It should really be, um, closer to, uh, $25 a barrel. That's the intrinsic value of oil because there's an X amount of supply, blah, blah, blah. That's the real price of oil. But the next question has to be what? Well, when is it going to be oil? I mean, what's your next action? If you know that oil is supposed to be, is really worth 25 bucks a barrel. I mean, what are you going to do? You just going to short it, take everything margin, all the margin, everything you can get leveraged up short and just sit on oil and wait. What if it goes back up to 65 first, right? breaks through 65 rallies to 80 for two years and then doesn't collapse to 25 till 2020. The problem with the fundamentals, it just does not include any timing piece. It doesn't include the market's overall positioning. If everybody's short oil and you get a little bit of squeeze above the highs from earlier in the year, I mean, you could easily go back to 65 and it has nothing to do with the fundamentals. So we don't trade on fundamentals. I think that's, it has its place, especially if you're investing longer term. It gives you an idea of where a market might trade to or where a company should probably gravitate to longer term, but it doesn't help you with the timing, right? And then so the technicals kind of came on the scene in the 80s. And again, I come from a background in the bond world and had um, 
um, the guys that introduced me and taught me the bond business were all export or trade guys. And they made a lot of money in the eighties, right out of school. Some of them never even graduated cause they were down on the floor, just literally scratching out charts and hand drawing technical charts and selling that to different customers on the floor. But there was a lot of people making money doing technical analysis in the eighties. And literally you had to sell yourself and explain to people what, what technical analysis was. And now everybody's pretty much a technician. Um, and that's good. The, the nice part about the technicals, right, is you can see where you're wrong. You can, there's lots of different ways that you can plan your trade around the technicals. There's lots of different, um, it's much more visual. So you obviously can know where you're wrong, where your stop might be. Um, and so we do, we do trade the technicals a lot in our model, but I think the next evolution of the business and of, um, um, trading in and investing is this concept of cyclical analysis and nobody, you don't hear, hear, hear very many people talk about it. I think I'm probably one of the only traders and analysts that consistently is talking about time, but that's, I think that's the future here is what we got to, we got to understand this concept of time. It's the, you know, it's the fourth dimension and, um, it affects everything. So we can talk about that a little bit later. And then the last piece is the mental analysis. So my traders on my team, why you want to want to join up with us is it's not just about price. It's not about calling out market profile. It's really about getting into how you think and learning to think the right way as a trader. That's everything when it comes to consistency. Because there, there's a lot of traders, guys, that they, they're great at the technicals. They can draw this trend line all day long from this high to that high and show you exactly why the market failed there and they can make a great call. But they don't know what it feels like to work a position or to be, to start. I mean, we started our short here on oil the last time we were here in April. And you've got to learn how to work a trade and a position that goes against you. You got to learn to be early with the cycle, what we call the left-hand side of the chart, right? You got you to learn mentally to not only say, okay, there's a chance I'll be wrong here and where am I wrong? Okay, I'm, I'm wrong up here. But then to know how to work a trade in negative territory and keep the right mindset and not capitulate on the highs, not to get fearful right when you should be shorting more. Um, and all those things, I mean, it, it's all about the process and it's all about working on your state of mind as a trader. And that's what we do every day. Cause you can, you can go try to find a system that gives you the perfect indicators and all this, but that has nothing to do with process. We want to focus on the process, 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 and then think about how you're, you got to be thinking about how you're thinking your emotions. And I can see a novice trader or a trader who's struggling with fighting the market constantly just, just because of the way they talk, just because of the way they think about um, just how they're perceiving the risk. Um, there's a lot of traders that don't know how to embrace risk. So the first step in embracing risk or taking responsibility is you got to understand that, okay, doesn't really matter where the market goes. I didn't need to know where their market's headed next. I just need to accept the risk that if I start shorting here and the market does push higher on me, two, three, four dollars, do I really accept the risk that the market could trade all the way back to these highs? And am I and am I okay losing X amount or going into negative territory and embracing this risk? Or as soon as it doesn't do what I think the market should do, am I going to start fighting it? Am I going to start just averaging in aggressively because I want to fight the market because I think it should go down. I think it should have went down four days ago. And you build, you scenario build in your mind a sense of reality of what you want the market to do. And that has nothing to do. The market doesn't care about what you think. It doesn't care about, what your position is. Um, 
And so those are the mental pieces that we have to work on. You have to separate your ego from your trading process. You have to be aware that if you start shorting here and you're early, why are you being fearful here? Why are you being upset with the market up here? Why are you really upset? If you started shorting here and you said, okay, maybe it goes back to these highs, I'm fine with that. I'll start shorting here. Four days later, just because you're in negative territory, you're, you're all mad and upset. That's not, that's being emotional and fighting the market. That's not, has nothing to do with your trading plan. If you say, all right, I'll short here first, but I'm only going to do one to two lots and I know I have 10 lots behind it. Okay, no problem. If the market pushes up on me, fine. I'm going to sell more lots at a higher price, give myself a better average, right? And I'll work the position from there. No problem. That's just a completely different mindset than the trader that's so frustrated because this technical line, the market didn't fail at. And, you know, in their mind, they're so smart in this technical line, there was no way it should have broke. Now they're angry at the market, they're frustrated, and they finally just get, you know, they're, they're revenge trading here. And then by the time two days later, the market's just squeezing them, they capitulate, they stop out on the high. That's all because of the mental piece, not planning your trade right, being way too aggressive too early. That's the mental piece why a lot of traders stopped out up here. Now there's a time piece there too. Whoops, there's a time piece here. Why it does that? That could have helped you stay in this trade. Like this was early, this is a swing line was early, 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 early. It wasn't until right here that you took out these lows that were at the right hand side of the chart. This is where you wanted to be aggressive, not here because you were wrong. That, that's a lot of the mental analysis. Traders, when they get wrong, they fight the market with their size because they want, okay, I'll get my, my average closer to the market. All I need is a little bit of a, a downtrade. I'll get out. Market never gives them enough of the downtrade, makes a new high, right? That's all the mental stuff in uh in trading uh one second guys um so so that's the mental analysis side before we get into cyclical stuff, um, let's just spend a little bit more time, I guess, talking about this. So the, the technicals is nice because it will, a good technical trader is basically should be trading what is happening versus what they think should happen. So the fundamental trader is always building the story in their mind of what they think should happen. Something should happen at the o, OPEC meeting, X amount of shale, business is going on and X amount of drillers are coming back online. This should create supply, blah, 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 blah. Very tough to trade that way because you're trading some, you're trading a scenario that may not be actual reality versus when you're trading the technicals, you're trading what is, and that's what we want to trade. We want to trade what is not what we think should happen because we're so smart, right? Or, not because somebody on TV said this or some analyst at this bank thinks this. All that stuff is smoke and mirrors. We want to get good at trading what is. And then when you build a model that just, there's no guessing, there's no, well, I'm not sure. What about Trump? What about this? None of that, guys. When you, when you have a model and you trade what is, there's no second guessing. Like I, I talked about this before. Yeah, we might, this might be the area that we fail at 52, 53, but I don't, you know, I don't know. It's not really that helpful to try to guess. Is it 52? Is it 53? Is it 52 and a half? 
all we cared about was as soon as this swing line low was taken out, boom, that's where we're going to want to add. We did the same thing here, did the same thing back here, did the same thing here and went long when this swing line was taken out down here on oil. Boom, long right there. Covered our shorts on this bottoming tail and then went long here. Um, but anyway, that's the shift from fundamental to technical. And then technical, I think the next shift the trader really needs to make is to the mental piece. And so, um, but this is what really separates a trader out. If you wanna be consistent, it's really you gotta get the way you think the right way. So I'll help, I help my traders. I mean, we're a very consistent group. Um, we had one losing day last week. We didn't have any losing days the week before that. We had a break even day today, but we're, we had winning sessions uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. I, I was traveling Monday. And so I'll teach you guys the model that I've developed, which is again about price and time. And the timing piece is really key to helping be consistent. But then you really got to shift towards the psychological arena. Um, I mean, because there's an endless opportunity, guys, in markets, right? I mean, it's just, that's what markets are, is constant energy flow, constant motion. And so the money is constantly flowing also. So there's, there's unlimited possibilities. But the problem that most traders have is when they get the risk on or they get in a trade, it's a constant emotional battle because one, they don't have a process, but two, they're not, they're not actively and intentionally working on the way they think and the way they feel when they're trading. Um, and that's what really separates out the group. I mean, one, the consistent traders, it's, it's more of an effortless flow in the zone type of trading. I mean, when I see this wing line set up this morning, I don't have to even think twice about, should I add and short more of the market? Or is this bearish? Because it's just a mental state that I'm looking for those lower lows. And when I get it, I know in my model, that's a high probability that there's more follow through to the downside. And so I don't have this mental anguish of going back and forth of, well, what about what did OPEC say? Or what about this? Or let me check what this person's opinion is. Or what about this support level or that resistance? It's just effortless. And that's the kind of the state you want to get in when you, when you have a model and a process that dominates the majority of your decision making, it just becomes so much easier. Um, and that's kind of what we, what we work on here. So I don't know, I'll just, I found some of these I'd share with you guys from, I dug some of these out yesterday. I came across just different trades. And this is the stuff that I've been working on for a long, long time. And so like, here's some of the, here's some of the old sheets I would have when I would be sitting on the desk. This is five year futures. This is a Bloomberg printouted chart I did. And so here I was talking about phase three, the different levels of what we call now our TMS model. Oh, hey, Vinny. Oh, you guys, no, you can ask questions now. Um, I'm just kind of keeping it, uh, I don't know. I'm just kind of winging it today. Um, If I don't see your question, I mean, I'll definitely get to it at the end. Yeah, we can talk about stops for sure. Um, so anyway, this is just, this is all the stuff the guys of years and years and years just working on your craft. And I would just encourage you, any of you that are thinking about joining our team or wanting to sign up, I mean, this is the experience that you're going to gain, that you're going to piggyback on. I mean, I've gone down so many wrong routes in the trading world. It always costs money. And more importantly, it costs so much time for you to finally get to the right conclusion. And I can help save you all that struggle and get you to that 
level of consistency quicker. Um, that's what's nice about having a coach and a mentor. And so that's why I, you know, and I structured the team that way. I wanted to have, I wanted us to trade together every day because when we're inside a trades, completely different than just learning off a DVD, right? You have to have the risk on, you have to feel it go against you. You got to know when to add. You, and, and more importantly, this is, I guess this was me doing some work on Apple. And you can see here, this is the TMS. This is what I later coined TMS, but you can see this was me highlighting the same things and knowing where in the swing line, where you want to enter. And I teach you guys all this in our model under our setup section. This is all the stuff that I get into. How to properly identify the trends. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll answer your stop in a, your question on a stop in a second. I just don't want to jump around too much because I'll <laughs> forget what the hell I'm talking about. Um, I dug this one out too. This is... I guess I should save this one for when we're talking about the cycles. Uh, but this was in rates. This is the 10 year going back to 1981. Um, this is the business cycle down here, this purple line. This is the 8.6 year business cycle. It has a minor wave frequency of two and a half years turning points. But then these smaller cycles build into the larger cycles. So you can see I was doing this back in 2012. Um, this was a good one. I meant to show my guys. For those of you that are on the team, you might like this one. This was one I was working on, I guess, in March. So this is me trading treasuries. Um, and this is what I teach my traders. I mean, it's not just, again, it's not just like, Hey, most educators out there, they'll, they'll do some good stuff. They'll teach you how to identify bottoming tail candles and, you know, how to follow the trend and trade breakouts and all that stuff's good, good stuff. But that's just surface level things you need to learn. Like, I want you guys to join my team, not just to learn the model, which is worth every penny of it. And I mean, it can make you thousands, if not millions of dollars over your life, just the model I built. But you guys really want to learn how to think like I do. What, you know, why don't you sell into the new lows, Jason? Why are you always taking profit in the new lows? Oh, okay, because you went through a stage where you were pressing. And I did. I went through a stage where I kept selling the new lows because I was being greedy. I wanted to make more money. That's the stage you go through as a trader when you're trying to progress and make more money. You're, you're already consistent. Then you want to go to the next level. It's really easy to start pressing. So I have some traders that are kind of at that stage and I can help work with them on that. Or there's just, a, there's all the types of the mental piece guys that you're going to want to learn. It's not just learning the techniques or a moving average or, uh, you know, using a stochastic indicator. You got to learn how to think the right way as a trader. Otherwise, you'll get the market right all the time or a majority of the time, and you're going to screw the trade up because your emotions are running wild or you keep repeating the same bad habits. And that's usually just a little bit of adjustment mentally that will con completely get rid of that and make your consistency and your equity curve go to a whole new level. So I know, I know here I was talking about keeping an eye on the 10s and 30s both together, um, talking about the one minute, the one minute rolled through the 200, covered some fives. This is 19 and seven eights, back towards the 200. So here I was saying I made 1600 and just identifying which book that was. I had a couple of books I was trading. And so that was by 1130. And then I knew I did 22 trades. Can you guys see this? Okay. Sometimes I'll bring up the wrong. I'll be talking about something completely different. The screen share is not on there. But, uh, but this is what I teach my traders. This is how you should be journaling. Every single one of your trades, you should be talking it through, doing post analysis. This is all mental analysis stuff, guys. This is high level professional trading. This is, this is where you want to get to. 
This is working on your game. This is the equivalent of an athlete watching video after the game, you know. Yeah, I'm a Broncos fan, but Peyton Manning, the guy watched more video after his games than anybody else. Just constantly. You got to go over your trades and this is how you dig into this is how you'll grow. So I'm I'm writing down my number of trades, talking about reselling back around the one minute. Um I resold another 200,000. Then I'm saying my total position is 300. 30 sold off, five ticks, reduced my size. Now, then I was up 2,300. Uh, I was using this thing called a trender, which basically shows the trend. And then I got flat, 1,900, 31 trades, boom. And I'm keeping track of all that. And then I would go back and look at this was my actual trade found this i pasted this right next to it found this last night so here i went in and i pasted this chart this was that same trade and uh so this was me while i was shorting this i was highlighting what i was doing and it's interesting now because even two years later i'll go back and look at this and i'll know right there there was opportunity to short here and then maybe hit it there but really this was the this was the right place to get aggressive was right in here because you took out these lows i don't think i would be shorting this today this is me pressing i can just tell by looking at this this is too oversold i would have rather sold the one minute bounce here and covered into new lows but you can see i was shorting more on this particular day back then which is interesting to me but then we got the follow through and this is me covering, reshoring, covering, reshoring, covering, and then flat. But I'll teach, teach my guys and gals, you know, of course, this is how I want them journaling their trades, both in their notebook, um, both in their notebook and then on the chart as well. But yeah, let me answer your question about the stops and then I don't know. I guess we could get into some of the cyclical stuff. Here, let me bring up. Let me just go back to a chart here. So many windows open. You want to use oil? Sure. Are you trading that right now? Sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, Vinit. Um, I'm from Colorado, so we, I don't know, I'm not very well rounded with the uh, different accents. Just a hockey player from Colorado. <clears throat> You're trading it now? on the short side okay 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 so theodore is your first name right okay um yeah so you're asking me the stops as far as the cycles okay yeah so when there's a couple things i mean Obviously, I don't want to give away all the the time components. I kind of leave that for the people that sign up for the team. But there's always two things that you really want to care about when you're trading. You want to care about the trend. Where is the trend going to change? And then you have to ask yourself, well, what time frame? Because you can have, obviously, a five-minute uptrend, right? You can have a five-minute or a near-term trend doing this, right? or an intermediate term trend. And then you have a trend like this, which is a longer term trend. And this is lower highs, right? Relative to that high. This high is lower relative to this high. So for me, I'm always looking, I teach my traders the right way to identify the trend. It doesn't have to do with moving average crosses, doesn't have to do with any indicator. 
only has to do with price action relative to itself, which I call the TMS, which is technical market structure. And that's just identifying the highs and lows, but you got to do it in the right way in the right location. So we've had this area identified just based on these highs, pretty simple. So I've been long-term bearish because of the trend and the longer term cycles, but I'm looking for a lower high relative to this high. Okay. That's what creates the trend is downtrend is lower highs and lower lows uptrend, higher highs, higher highs, sideways range trade, equidistant highs, equidistant lows, right? Pretty simple, but too many people are following too many indicators and too many poor um, processes. So we don't, it's not about moving averages. It's not about, I mean, now we use these bands because it gives a good visual. I call that the wave formation. And, you know, we do things like follow the direction of the eight or the 30 day. We care about the 200. We care about this line, which is the pie line. But I'm always, I'm always identifying where I'm wrong or my risk or to your, your to your answer your question, my stop is always based on either a prior high, like up here, or this high, depending on what time frame you're trading. Or in this case, when I added more today, I was going to use this high as my. So the additional lots that I added today, I was using this as my high, as my stop. And that's just based on price, right? That's based on price and trend. From a cyclical perspective, We'll use a cross, we'll use whether it's high or low. Um, but typically when we're exiting, we don't really do stops that much unless the cycle turns back up with a cross type of scenario. Then we would say, all right, just cut, kill the risk and wait for the next down cycle. Um, it's tough to explain in one sitting, but yeah, there's, there's time, time stops we'll use especially on exiting like i liked covering down here because the cycle was low on the weekly level or the four hour was really low down here so a lot of times the cycle gets low yeah you want to be taking profit and that keeps you from getting bearish on the lows like there's a lot of people a lot of people that didn't want to sell here i don't know why guys my my pen is going crazy today it'll just like jump there was a lot of people that were fearful here and then didn't know what to do here. And then they're literally waiting for the market to take out a low and shorting here. That's shorting at the bottom of the cycle and that's chasing price. That's just terrible. And I used to do that. I used to short this because I, because you weren't sure you had no concept of time and you have no concept of trend and all you're looking for is a bearish signal and you say, well, these lows broke, it must mean there's a good chance at lower prices. And there's a ton of traders that were shorting this day, guarantee it. We were covering, I was shorting here, here, and we were covering in these, I mean, I was out on this bar. You guys know what I mean? Lots of people shorting this candle and that's what creates the move that's what creates the squeeze back up that gives the fuel for the pendulum to swing the other way um anyway it's it's already 145 all right let me just get into the cyclical stuff really quickly uh just give me another second here, guys. I gotta. So I'll just give you a few slides from our training, but I talk a lot about the model. Can you guys see the PowerPoints here? So I've studied a lot about cycles. I mean, you can't deny they exist, right? They, they exist in pretty much every other scientific field that we study. 
right? But when it comes to trading, for some reason, it's not nobody. Nobody builds the time component into their analysis. And so I always tell people, look, the, the origins of our model, it's not about some special indicator or anything like that. It's just understanding that energy and everything vibrates and everything is energy. So the markets is just energy moving through the medium, just like a wave. Energy moves through the water in a wave. It's not really the water that's necessarily moving. It's up and down is just the meat. The water is just the medium, right? Same way light travels from the sun. It's all waves. So there's a, there's a certain level of energy that's constantly going through the markets. And yeah, that's people being fearful and greedy. There's a lot of that in emotion. I'm not saying that it's just physics, but that's what creates the cycles. And then you can't ignore the time component. Time affects everything. So I go over a lot of history of the model. We talk about, we talk about the physics, thermodynamics, um, the parallels there. Um, but really it's just back to an idea of, of an oscillation of time. That's why the stochastic works so well. That's why I teach my traders that. Um, we do a lot of concepts around pi, right? Pi is a perfect cycle. And build that into the charts. You can see just in a simple sine and cosine wave, it's all derivatives of pi. That's why that's why price cycles away on the charts and comes back to our pi line and it'll hold sometimes exactly. Um, I mean, the best example I have of that is on Brexit. Brexit, the market failed right at our pie line, exactly. I mean, nobody has that line on their chart. I mean, I pretty much, I'm the one that discovered that little simple concept. You guys see the chart again? I know I'm kind of jumping all over the place. Right here, this is Brexit. Failed right into our pie line. I'll show it to you on the daily level. I can show you examples of this over and over and over and over and over again, because it's, these aren't just moving averages that are all about price. These are incorporating time. And so that's just the nature of the design of the universe. It happens over and over and over again. So, but again, you have to know, you can't just have one indicator, right? You got to know how to apply the right mental process. You got to know how to apply the right size how to work a position. You got to put it all together. That's what's great about what we do on our team. It's not just trying to teach you one or two concepts, trying to help you put it all together. Um, I don't know, guys, you get, what other questions do you guys have? So again, we're spending a lot of, a lot of work on time. Um, it's a fractal model. How many of you guys have heard of fractals? Fractal trading. It all has to do with the smaller patterns building into larger patterns. But you can see the fractals in nature. Um, everything from DNA to coastlines. So our model is built on that too. But if you guys join our team, that's what we learn. The analysis, you learn. I teach you how to properly identify the trend, how to use the cycles. I teach you all the execution setups. Because again, you could be a great technical analyst and you can you can find the edges in the markets all day long, but you, you're terrible at executing on that. So how you work your position, when you add, when you get heavy, when you're light, when you're early, where's your stop, where's your trailing stop? Where's your profit take? What are your profit take rules? What are your adding rules? That's all execution. Risk, risk is all about trading plan. What's your max loss per trade, per week, per month? Um, when are you too heavy, too early? 
Um, and then the psychology trading, that's all on the risk side. Embracing the risk, meaning if you're too heavy, too early, you're not going to be able to sit through the trade. You're going to feel too much pain. It becomes too emotional. It's too much fear. And the fear will block your thinking. The fear will totally crowd out every of what the opportunity flow or, or it, it stops you from perceiving what's actually happening in the market. The fear just paralyzes you. And it blocks the thing with fear is your brain. It's very, this is very subtle, but this is again, part of the mental analysis. Your brain will start to literally um, create scenarios and block out everything else that is, that is causing you the pain. So it, it, it'll just block out and only tell you what you want to hear or only you only focus on the scenario that will make you feel the less amount, the least amount of pain. And that's gets in, that's where your traders get into trouble because they're not. And as soon as they stop out and they step back from, you know, step away from the trade, then it's, Oh, I wish I could have done that. Or I should have stayed in it. If I'd only kept my position, I would have sold the high. I would have made all this money. That's all because they get, they're too screwed up on the risk side. They're just mentally, mentally, they're not there yet. And they're not, and that just comes from not embracing the right amount of risk. All right. So that's all the mental stuff that we work on. Uh, anyway, guys, so that was kind of long winded. I'll just share with you this real quick. I mean, um, the mental part and the timing piece is what will really help you get consistent. I'll just show you some of my, I showed you guys an example of that trading journal I was doing. That was from this same time frame when I was just trading treasuries on two books when I was running the rates desk. And this is the level of consistency I was having. So it takes years and years and years to develop this guys and a lot of losing, a lot of dead ends, a lot of lost money. But this is the kind type of consistency that's available. I mean, I didn't have a single losing month here. Okay. Um, did almost 200 grand, which it's not about guys. And again, this kind of bothers me about people in the marketplace, they're always saying, well, show me your results or show me this, show me that. That's the wrong question. You don't want to be focused on the end result. Someone tells you they made a million dollars, whether it's in trading or in XY business or in real estate. Focusing on the end result doesn't help you. That does, that's, never, that's not the right question. You should be asking about the process. What did you do to make a million dollars in real estate? What was your business? What challenges did you have? What was your process? What was your daily routine? You gotta, it's about the process. It's not about, oh, I did this amount and some, somebody else who has a trading plan maybe did half of that or twice that amount. To me, that's goofy guys, especially in trading. I mean, I, I worked with traders. I had a swaps trader. He, he and I would trade together. He would make a million dollars in a day. And you think if I called him up when I, when I was uh, wanting to work with him and told him who I was and what our model was about. You think if I told him like, oh yeah, man, I made $2,000 today trading tens. He doesn't care about that. That's like, that's nothing to him. If I told him I made $10,000 a day, it doesn't matter. He only cares about the process. Jason, show me your process. Show me what your call was today. What your, what's the high, what's the low? Oh, okay. Also, oh, this is your method to your madness, or this is why you do what you do. I like it. Okay, this can really help me. It's all relative, guys. And the key is, though, the consistency. So I show you this to show you the consistency, and you're not going to find it anywhere else. I mean, it's about a process, having a model, having a timing model, getting the time right, and then working on your mental aspects of your trading. And you can only really do that in a live setting together with the coach, with a mentor, doing it every day, right? Um, so anyway, guys, this is, this is how you get involved with us. Let me go back to the other slide now. Uh, so I don't know, if, I think most of you probably have been here. Go to JenkinsRM.com. And 
you know, I've given you a pretty good background about me here today, but you can always read more if you want. There's a, uh, I've done quite a bit of videos on the model. Here's some good testimonials. Oh, and let me just share this too, because I'm proud of this. So it's not just about me too, guys. This is, again, if our program or what I'm trying to do here is only as good as the people that I'm teaching, that they, that you guys can get the same results. It doesn't really matter what I've been able to do or it's, I don't, it's not about that. I mean, this is, this is one of my buddies here. When he first started trading the model, this is his first week. Look at this consistency. And that's why I keep telling you what separates most traders. It's the consistency. You got to have a timing. If you're, if you're not consistent, the timing piece will help you dramatically. Okay. The cycles and the way I teach you to time, time things, your setups, in and out, that's gonna help you. But again, it's the mental piece. You gotta get the psychology down. You gotta get all that mental stuff down. That's what separates out the traders. But this is just his first week picking up the concepts of the model. And I mean, he couldn't believe the consistency. Um, And he was starting small, which was rightfully way to do it. It was his first week. But you guys, this is this is what's possible. All right. So this is what he said. My first week of trading intraday only. Results are terrific. He's trading one tenth his size. But again, his consistency what matters. You can always add more zeros. Only one tiny loser all week. I mean, that just fires me up. That's awesome. All right, so the best way to get involved with us, um, you can shoot us an email to say that you're interested in talking about joining the full access team. I mean, it's not for everyone, but I mean, if you're really serious about trading and want to be consistent and do it on a high level on a professional basis with a model, I mean, this is the right place to be. Um, I mean, so we have some other services. We have a real time alert service. It's free to join our chat room. All right, just come in and get involved. Um, I'm just trying to think here, Rita. Anything else? You guys have any other questions? Well, let me just tell you this too. I haven't gone out to the public yet. I'm in the process of. Um, trying to set up a prop firm and I want to do this differently. This is one of the things that bothers me about the industry is that everybody has the dream of wanting to trade full time. Right. And it's probably only, I don't know, 97% of the people probably fail at it to being really consistent where you can make a living at it, pull money out of the market every day. It's your sole livelihood. Your, you know, but whether you want to do that full time or part time, there's just a lot of programs out there that stick you in a uh, a simulator and they pretend to fund you, and they never do. All right. Meanwhile, they charge you monthly fees for trading in the simulator. I'm in the process of trying to get all the uh, we got the brokers together. You got to put some of the final stuff together. But if we launch a prop program here pretty soon it's going to be live money i'm going to help you're going to trade with me during the day all right um together to get, help get you consistent and profitable and then i want to actually get you guys funded with some capital to start pulling real money out of the market so i'm trying to get that started in june i haven't gone out there with it you know it's not on their website or anything yet but I'll just tell you, if you guys are on the fence about joining or, you know, it's it's a little bit of a sacrifice money wise. The price is going to be double or triple in June if we launch the pro the prop program. So anybody that joins here Friday or, or by the end of the, you know, end of the month. You'll you'll be kind of grandfathered in. So it's going to be price is going to go way up. Join the team starting in June. I'll just let you give you guys a heads up on that one. Um, I think that's pretty much all I have, guys. 
And I'll just say, I'll just leave you with this too. One more thing of encouragement. I'm trying to show you the value of the consistency. I know I'm being pretty serious about it. <laughs> it's kind of, um, sometimes our sessions together are a little bit more informal and casual, but I would just encourage you when you think about joining a team like this or any other product that you buy, that somebody's trying to sell you something in trading or investing, just think about the investment in yourself and don't think of it as a cost. All right. There's just so many people. I think that it hangs them up because they have the wrong broke mentality. They think, Oh man, it's 5,000 bucks or 10,000 bucks. I mean, I don't have the money or why is that seems like a lot. I mean, when I wanted to learn to trade Forex, I spent 12 grand to learn a couple things in the Forex market and a couple strategies. And, to me, it's a, it's where that comes from. It's a question of worth. So, if you find yourself asking yourself that, well, you gotta, what is it? What is? It, what are you really worth? You think you could take one concept, whether it be a program for a thousand bucks or ten thousand bucks, and get one or two ideas that you could actually, over a lifetime, 10, 15, 20 years, make more than ten thousand dollars? I mean, that's what my thinking was, is like, all right, this is 12 grand. I don't really have 12 grand, but you know what? If I learn these concepts and I take them into the treasury market, because this is a new market, I just learned bonds. Why don't I learn Forex? This is, I like what I'm seeing here. That's though I just had a different mindset. And then literally we took that 12 grand and we took into the treasury markets and made millions. Talk about guys making millions on the desk. We did 8 million on the desk. I'd have $50,000 days. It's a different mindset, guys. You just have to, you want to, you want to invest in yourself. All right. That's just, I'll just leave it at that as far as words of encouragement. So whatever we can do to help get you on the team, you know, maybe we can work with you, but I just encourage you guys sign up, you know, soon. Don't wait till June. Cause it's going to be, I'm not kidding. It's going to be two or three times more. And if you guys even sign up by Friday, I might even throw in the options thing just to reward you for investing in yourself and taking action. So that's what the market rewards too, is being confident and no hesitation. So anyway, guys, any, anybody else had any questions? Uh, hopefully, I, I don't know. Hopefully I had some value on the, the mental analysis side give you a little background on why the cyclicals are the cycles are important, but just come I look forward to seeing the room. You know, you can reach out to me. Um, so you guys know where to find me. If I don't talk to you, enjoy the rest of your trading day. And I look forward to see, seeing somebody in the room. All right, guys, you're welcome. All right, John. Yeah, you guys are very welcome. Nice seeing some new names. So come join the chat room, guys. Hit me up. I'd love to talk to you. Enjoy the rest of your day.